Welcome back to the Super Tuesday Recap. This is your host, Chris, here. Uh, and uh, I think this is my last Super Tuesday without Deepom, but uh, today I have a special in-studio guest for the Super Tuesday. I have my man, uh, Justin, from Three Fist Podcast, LJ90. Uh, we are here to review episode uh, five of season six of Arrow, Deathstroke Returns. Um, before we get into this episode, though, because this, this is funny, um, I did the same thing when I had Rod on, uh, and... It is even better with you because you hadn't seen season five. No, yet. I had not seen season five. I had avoided. I don't know how I managed to do it, but I had avoided all spoilers. I had avoided all the reveals. And so I, I had a chance to go back and watch season five, trying to catch up for this when you asked me to review uh, this episode. So I didn't hate season three or four. I actually really enjoyed season three. Uh, season four, I'm like, you know what? I, I see what they're doing here. I like it. I, I don't. I can see the critiques people have of both seasons, but I, I'm, I didn't hate them. Then I got season five, and I got things that I had no idea that I wanted, and that was the best. Like season six, notwithstanding, because it's not finished yet. Season five is the best season of Arrow I've ever seen in my life. Like that. That's. It, it, it was beautiful. I, I try to tell people last season on the Arrowverse that between season five of Arrow and season two of Legend of Tomorrow. Those are the two best shows. I'm sorry. Hey, look, yes. I know everybody likes The Flash and everybody likes the default to The Flash. The Flash had a terrible season and they had an okay season too. They did. I mean, that's just a fact, you know. Um, but Arrow, and, and this is the other thing too about Arrow, they always finish strong anyway. Yes. But that entire season five was good. I'm sorry. Everything. That Bruh, shit was great. When my man had Oliver locked up, he said, I just want you to confess, Oliver. That's all I want. I just need you to confess. Right. It's just everything about this, like you said, the the and it ties into this episode here. Can we finally get the reveal of uh, who Vigilante is? But like you know, when they revealed that Adrian Chase wasn't Vigilante and he was actually Prometheus, like it blew our minds. It was like, oh, in the comics, Adrian Chase is Vigilante. What are we doing here? Like, why? and like the the way they set it up and the way they write it, it's like, okay, you're playing on the fact that the audience knows that it's Vigilante. You're giving that mm-hmm. wink to the fans. It's going to pay off in the reveal. Like we know it. You know that we know it. That mask comes off as Adrian Chase, and I'm like, you bastards. You did know we knew it. Right. That's you, why you wrote it that way. You you ruined our lives. You ruined our lives on that one. So, um, yeah, man, it you just, whew, so good, so good. So uh, we get into season six. So you you started, uh, I guess, catching on this season. So what, what do you thought of this season so far up to this episode? Oh, I, I am liking John being Green Arrow and John making the Oliver mistakes. Mm-hmm. Of, like, not communicating with the team, like, the extent of his injuries and doing reckless shit so he can get back in the field, right? Yes. I, I, I like that this is where we're going with John's arc. Um, I don't know if you guys have talked about it yet. Because, um, like I said, I, I've tried to, what I normally do is when the season ends, I'll go back and watch it. I don't know if it's just the chemistry that John's actor has with Dinah's, just, like, just the natural chemistry they have, or if they're trying to have a subplot there, but I feel like John's going to fuck up his marriage eventually. Uh, no, 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 no. This is what's so great about this, uh, you not having listened to our review. The first episode of this season, <laughs> that was the first thing we were like, hey, so we all know John's going to fuck this up, right? Like, John's going to, John and Diana are about to have a relationship, right? Because it's, it's so good. Like, even in this episode, yes. when you see it again, you're just like, Oh, they're gonna fall on each other's arm. Like this is this is all going and, and, to be. And again, bad. I don't know if that's something they're actually writing, or if this those two characters, those two actors, just play off of each other really well. That it just gives that appearance. But man, if I'm Lyle, I'm just showing up at the office like, hey, John, you know, just checking in, just want to see how everything's going. You, you, you know, you know when it hit me that I think this is really gonna how it's gonna it's gonna go down this way. So in this episode, in episode six. Um, there, uh, John is in the building, uh, the, the, the building where Vigilante tried to take a shot at the, um, the councilwoman, right? And first of all, in the back of my mind, I'm going, John, why are you even here? Like, you shouldn't be here. You're not on, like, someone's going to say something. And then when, uh, Agent Watson shows up and then says the same thing, it's like, why are you even here? And so I'm waiting, you know, and Dinah was like, well, you know, the mayor asked him to be here. He has specially, he, he has, he, he has specially in the same. She's like, what is your specialty in? Back of my mind, I'm going, yo, John, just say, my wife works for Argus. I've worked. I've, I've consulted with Argus before. That's the thing. That's really all he had to say. That's all he had to say. And this nigga was like, I was a sniper. I'm like, um, why would you? I mean, I'm not saying you weren't, but I'm just, why would you go with something that's harder to, like, if you just drop the Argus name and your wife's name, it's good. It's, it's almost right. like you don't want to mention your wife, your wife around <laughs> Dinah. It's just, 
I'm kind of. I didn't even get that. No, I, I, no, no. I'm 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 100 on this one. I look. I am not a shipper. I I am a home wrecker. So I am all go. about I am all about breaking up shit. And uh, this is going to be a terrible fall for John. <laughs> and <laughs> I am doing like I noticed that immediately. I'm like John, just say your wife. Your your life. Your wife is Wait, the director. Has of Dinah artists. met Lila? I think she had to have. Hmm. Have we seen them on screen at the same time? Hmm. Um. Damn. I don't know. See, all right, we gotta. We have to. See I think it. they had to. I think they had to because remember when um when the whole Helix thing went down with um uh uh, uh Felicity and them Oliver and the team I think went to stop her and I, you know what I'm not sure I'm not sure if we've ever seen Lila in. So, a, so does Dinah know? She has, that no, John, yes, she knows. She, has, does, she, does knows she? she knows he has a wife and a child. She knows. Well, well, hold on, because you know what dudes do? I mean, you know, that's just, that's just <laughs> no, home. No, no. I got <laughs> I to gotta, I gotta go with the fact that she has to know. She has to, because, I mean, there's no way she doesn't. She, there's no way she doesn't know. So this is, I'm not going to give Dinah an out on this one. She knows. She knows, and well, she's, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be so good. It's going to, oh, man, this is. It's gonna, it's gonna go down, and it's gonna go down horribly. And I am a hundred percent for it, 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 it going all the way down. Like I'm, I'm sorry. It just like even if that wasn't the intent, sometimes these things will happen. Like they'll see two actors just have great chemistry. It's like, well, you have this chemistry anyway. Like I think that's how Joe and Cecile happened. Like I don't think that was the original plan for Flash, but the two actors played so well off of each other. They said, "Okay, let's see where this goes." Well, it's it's, it's Oliver and Felicity again. Like yes. Felicity wasn't supposed to be a a, a long term character on the show, and now you can't imagine the show without her. So, like, and season four, I understand why they did it. Her and Stephen Amell have great chemistry. It's just hard to make that plot work in Arrow. But right. the two actors, you're like, I have to take advantage. You I don't got, get this do often. I, I have do to take advantage of it. I got it. And I think they're doing a better job with it the last two yes. seasons anyway. So I think they found their stride with it. So, um, yeah, man, the whole the whole Vigilante thing this episode, when they finally get to the reveal. And I'm like, so when you reveal who Vigilante is, you're going to have to be something that really hits you. And so they reveal that Vigilante is um, Dinah's ex. Um, the man who died, she watched get shot and died. Remember, she got her powers when the particle accelerator went off then, and apparently he did too, and he basically turns into Wolverine. Like, he, right. he can heal. Yo, they did that flashback. They saw him get shot. I, we saw him get shot in the head. I was like, oh, my God, he has a healing factor. Yeah. Because his scar is right behind where he would have got shot in the face. I was exactly. like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, they made, they made him not Wolverine. So um, Not it, Deadpool. Not Deadpool. <laughs> You're right, not Deadpool. Which makes great. So you have uh, you already have Slade on the show, and so you have yeah whatever. Um, so the thing that the the reason why this works for me in making this reveal, making somebody who we hadn't had a really uh, a connection to this character, and so you right. see him, but you do there. And this is this is what the, the the problem, not really a problem, but this is one of the, the critiques people had for season five is they did introduce all these other characters, and some of them didn't get a shine. And Dinah was one of them. They kind of ended in, in uh, they they introduced her in towards the end. Uh, like more than halfway through the season, she joins the team, and you're still trying to like, you know, they, they didn't really have a lot for her to do this season. They're like, yo, we're definitely going to give uh, Juliana way more to do as Dinah in the show, and by making this her ex and making vigilant and making her having to make this choice of, and she lets him go. Like, cause remember before. Before uh, they had that final confrontation, she's like, oh, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to put him down. If he's not, he's no longer the man I know. I'm going to handle this. I'm going to take care of him. Right. And when he stepped in front of that bullet for her, I was like, ah, oh, love triangle. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I immediately go, love triangle. It's over. It, it's done. And um, and so what I look at is this, this says is you're now giving uh, Dinah a, a, a full story that she can deal with, of having to deal with, you know, it, it's two things. It's, it's one and I think this is a lesser thing of her, it being her ex and, you know, you have the whole, you know, emotional thing there. But I think the bigger thing is, and I think it's something that, um, how, and what was his name? Oh, God, I can't remember what his. Vince. Uh, Vince yeah. What, what, the thing that Vincent said to her was basically like, hey, she's like, you can't do this. You're wearing a mask. He was like, oh, you're wearing one, too. Well, you, con- you confronted me and you're wearing a mask. You're, you're doing the same fucking thing. It's like, you know, like you're, you're saying that I, this isn't the way to go forward. This isn't how to do it. But. You're doing, you are on a team of vigilantes. 
like what it does is it gives her a foil, right? Mm-hmm. And her and John Lamb share that. It's like, yo, a few things break differently. You're vigilante instead of Black Canary. Yep. Like you easily could have been each other. So you you're fleshing out Dinah's story. You're giving her a foil to help make that story more whole. It it's great. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like what they did with um, Diggle and his brother last season. You know, <coughs> I'm still hoping that we get more Thea at some point. She gets out of her coma. But it's kind of what they did with Thea and Anarchy. Like, right. like Anarchy had her own. And I, and I like that aspect. When, you, when you're going to have a show like this, and it's something that um, they kind of have, they, they kind of did with um, Cisco sometimes in a flash. But I really think you need to do this. With a show like Arrow, uh, less like Legend of Tomorrow, because they they kind of just travel between time and do different things like this. But when you have a sh- when you have a team that that actively in the field, because Cisco doesn't always got in the field with, with Barry. Right, he's it, not really. It's a break glass in case of emergency. If right, Cisco's in the field. But with with with, with Arrow, it is a team, and, I, and you got to give you got to give Arrow versus credit for this of having each show handle their their superheroes differently, or their heroes in this case differently. So when you have a team, though, you need to have a way of actually making some of these team members matter and giving them something to do. So, um, you know, uh, Curtis is basically working with uh, Felicity, and that's tech support. You have um, Renee, who's Waldo, but it's interesting enough, he's getting more in the play. He's actually kind of taking the um, Thea role from last season where he's actually working with uh, Oliver legitly as in the mayor's office. Like this episode, it's like Oliver's like, you'll be the mayor. Yo, like, for you, real? For real? No, not for real. No, no, motherfucker. No. Real. They got excited. Like, hold up. You mean you mean I'm in charge? Don't make any laws while I'm gone, right? Um, and, and you have uh, John is actually you know, is now kind of taking over being Green Arrow, and you have Dinah now, where you can now give her a you know a, this um, her a vigilante, her ex as. Um, her kind of you know arts nemesis or something to deal with and something to come come to terms with. So it's going to be interesting seeing how they um, work on that. And I, and I actually I actually kind of like that. I like how they're I, I really love how they're handling each of the character season and not making it so that Oliver is the fuck up, right? Which has been which has been the, the problem the last five seasons. Oliver's always been the one you're going, damn it, Oliver. And now, because we've had five years of Oliver doing this, now Oliver can go into that sort of elder statesman, older Batman role of "I've made these mistakes. Maybe you should listen to me." Right, right. It's kind of, and it's kind of. I'm hoping that and you're seeing that a little bit. It's kind of what they're doing with Barry and the Flash. Is like now you have these guys with multiple, like let them be, and then let the people below them kind of make the mistakes and give them the opportunity right. to to grow, and it gives them more opportunity to grow. And you're seeing that more from these characters, and I really like that shit. And it's, it, it it really makes. The episodes feel. I, I feel one. You get to see these actors, and you're like, "Oh well, these people. This person can actually act. I mean, they're yes. actually they're actually good." And you can see that the show, like, Arrow's really kind of showing off right now because they're showing you that they can they can make a really good episode, a really good show, and not have Oliver in the suit. Well, just like um, what Flash did this week too. Mm-hmm. Barry never. There were no. There was no Flash. Yeah. There was no Green Arrow this episode. No Green like, Arrow. No, no one put on the Green Arrow suit. This You're episode. right. I forgot. Oh, actually, no. Diggle had it on it once, but he didn't do anything. When they showed up at Vigilante's hideout, That's the right. team shows up, but he doesn't shoot any arrows. He doesn't actually do anything. But it's great because you actually have Diggle being Green Arrow, but not really being Green Arrow because right. have, you, have, you don't have to have him do anything. You see him running the team, but not actually. And they're, they're, giving these dip, they're, they're giving the rest of the team a space to explore and grow. And I think, right. I think that's kind of the trap Flash fell into last season. Right. They introduced all these new characters. They introduced Wally's the speedster, and they didn't know what to do with them and how to make them grow. Yeah, because you, you got Jesse, you got Wally, you got, you know, you got you bring in Julian, you bring in Jay all these. Garrick. Jay Garrett. You, you bring all these characters, and you, you're like, okay, we don't know what to do with them. Like, we got to get rid of these pieces because there's too many pieces right now. We don't know what to do with them all. Right. Arrow's found a really good way of using all their pieces and doing a really good job. And then when you miss somebody, you don't really miss them that much. Because I'm like, wait, we didn't see Quentin this, this episode. We did not. And I'm like, well, we talked to we talked to Renee, and he was running the office. So, okay, it makes sense. You know? And then when you get this whole thing where you're dealing with Star City, and then you let Oliver go off with Slade and do these other things and get more of the Slade backstory, which, <sighs> look, man. He was always going, like, <laughs> seeing that backstory, <laughs> Slade... Even if the Mirror Crew didn't get into a system, Slade was always going to go down this road. <laughs> Listen, man. So first of all, I was not surprised that Joseph was running the, 
I can't remember what they what, what the, the jackals. Team, the jackals. I was not. Surprised. I was like, you know, he's running there. He know he's running the jackals, right? He's oh the minute. So I actually bought the your son is dead thing. Oh really? So I bought that. I was like, and now now the arc is going to be Oliver trying to talk <laughs> Slade off of a ledge, and we'll see how that plays out in the next episode. <laughs> yeah, we can't show him the body. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> he's probably in, he's either being tortured or he's in charge. Like those are the only two options. Yeah, when 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 old boy. Uh, uh, Chris Holden Reed showed up. Uh, Nylander, when he showed up, I was like, yeah, Joseph is running the jackal. <laughs> but before we get to that point, man, Slade goes through so, those motherfuckers. Yo. You know what that reminded me of? The end of Rogue One. <laughs> where that lightsaber just cuts off. <laughs> so here's what, you know what hit me? I Because I don't watch, I don't, I don't watch, even though they moved the time to Thursday, I don't watch Arrow live. So I'm watching this, this, and I'm just like, yo, Slade is cutting through motherfuckers, like legit putting swords yes. through, ch- through chests. Yes. He's slicing motherfuckers. He's, and I'm like, what the fuck? And I was like, they moved the time to nine. I forgot. This yep. is why. They moved to a later time, and they feel like they can do this now. They got the Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. time slot. It's, 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 it's the exact same thing that happened when Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. moved, and I was just like, son of a bitch, what the? Because, look, man, Slade... Goes through motherfuckers with like, a sword. It in this is episode. a horror show from the. It's a mook horror show. So you remember? You remember when um he killed uh Moira? Yes. The same thing when he stabbed her, and you're just like it was like a big moment. He's like oh, they showed a, a sword going through somebody in the episode, and it's eight o'clock oh my, on the CW. This is, this is crazy. You're just like wow, I can't believe they showed us that. Right? They basically did that. Well, that's how the, that's how it opens. Right. <laughs> Bam, war. Son of a shunk. The sword goes through. Old boy catches a clip to the chest, and I'm just like, he's going to kill all of them. <laughs> I mean, Slade was running people through with a sword, shooting them in the head, like... like Breaking necks. Like, it was a horror sport show. Of, sport of kicking people in the chest. I'm like... like when, <laughs> At some point, when, when, he, when they tell him, it's like, well, you can't go after them. It's like, it's like they don't know... Who they don't if they had known who it was they whose son it was they would never have taken they don't know what I can do I'm just like yeah you know it's like is, it's Liam Neeson just give me my son back just, yeah, just give me my son back this is just not a good thing to go on right here this is because I remember before this like when Oliver told Slade was like hey, listen we can't go in the guns blazing because you know hey listen man you know you lost a step you're older now you know you might not be oh yeah always talking that good you are out of practice you're out of practice nah. And I'm watching this, I'm like, mm, Oliver, if this is out of practice, Slade. <sighs> like, this actually might be better than Bear Crew Slade. Because, like, this motherfucker was getting shot at. Like, they shot this motherfucker and, and it, it didn't face him. He, it just angered him. <laughs> it just angered him. The bullets only made him angrier. Like, even when they surrounded him, I'm just like, you know, he is it because he stopped. Like, you guys didn't, like, get the best yeah, of him. I was about to say, he ran out of breath. Like, just, so there we go. Right. The old man ran out of breath. Right. A bit, like, the, the, the downside of old man strength, mm-hmm. you also have old man stamina. Like, you don't keep up the ass whooping for so long. Yeah, the old man lungs uh, failed him, and so he was just like, oh, you know what, fuck it, all right, let's 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 try the talking thing now. And I'm just, whew, Deathstroke returns. and uh, But not just that, man, the flashbacks. Yes. So, one, when you find... um. The, you, you kind of find out why he was on the island in the first place. And, you know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, we weren't going to get flashbacks anymore. I mean, these are kind of flashbacks I'm okay with because this is a flashback for Slade. Yes. So, 13 years ago. And I'm like, I don't mind flashbacks in general. Like, I think I think we're done with Oliver flashbacks. Oh, yeah. We, 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 we have all of the Oliver backstory that we need. We have five years of flashbacks and five years of real time. Oliver Queen is who he is. I would not mind more Renee flashbacks, more Slade flashbacks, oh, absolutely, more um, Curtis flashbacks, right? Like you can, I think the flashbacks work in Arrow just because it's six years in. We're used to seeing them. Mm-hmm. We don't have to have Oliver in the flashbacks anymore. Mm-hmm. Like you can use those to flesh out these other characters. Like I think what they did last year with Renee, that was all, I, I enjoyed seeing that window into what made him Wild right. Dog. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and um, the. Slade flashback, flashbacks this episode were just like, like I could tell it was like, uh, no, Slade, you're doing the whole take your kid on a trip thing so you can actually do work and kill somebody while you're on the trip. I'm like, that's a, oh, you asshole. That's an ass. And then, you, and then you get, then you, the picture of your son on that trip is taken by the guy you killed. Yes. Who was looking for Lee Fay. I'm like, oh, you asshole. Like, you're just, 
So I mean, Mark's father, you know, he's a pilot, and they get free trips. Yeah, we're our free trips, Dad. We're 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 a smaller, cheaper airline who doesn't get free vacation like that. So mind your fucking business, eat your fucking fish. <laughs> <laughs> just ungrateful little bastard. Yeah, you know, ungrateful little bastard, yo. And I'm just oh. And I, I love the fact that he drugged Oliver. Like, everything about this, like, Oliver was trying. Man, like, the thing I love about this is when Oliver puts the suit back on, you're going to realize why Oliver needs to be in the suit. It's, it's, that, it's, that, it's that thing of, like, uh, it reminds me of what they did with um, Scott Snyder's Batman when uh, Jim Gordon took over. Yes. And where it's like, it's not that Jim Gordon was bad as Batman, but you see why Bruce has to be Batman. Exactly. Like, it, it has to be Bruce. Bruce has to do this. You need you need the Batman. I mean, it, it, it's a standard comic book trope, right? Yeah. You you take the hero out, of, you take the main character out of play for whatever reason. Build up like you build up someone else, but you also show why that person matters. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, I gotta say, uh, that shit was great. Like, I, 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 there's not a lot to say about this episode because it's just like to me. I, I've been loving the season. Like they 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 get into it this episode. You you get why vigilante who vigilante is, and um, <clears throat> that's going to have a great um, impact on Dinah and and I think the team as well because you can see vigilante is going to fuck up the the vigilante referendum. Like something's going to happen and and fuck that up for the team, and they're going to all get in trouble for this shit. Well, it, it, I also like that Dinah doesn't keep it a secret from the team. Like she mm-hmm. doesn't she doesn't make the Oliver mistake. She's like, yo, it's Vince. Yeah, I. I don't know what to do with Vince. Yeah. But she did keep the secret from him that she let him get away. Yeah. Well, so, so, and that's so. going to, right. And that's going to come back and bite her in the ass. So, yeah. Um, I also love the, when she first hit him with the, the, the scream and the first to crack his, his uh, yeah. visor, he took the visor off. I was just like, so what, when she, the affection of the show was great. Yo. When she first hit him with the scream, I was like, oh, she's going to kill him because there's no way she would reveal her powers and not kill him. Like she's about to right. put two in the back of his head. Oh, no. <laughs> Right, and then like I said, when when uh, uh, Diggle reminded me, cause I forgot about this that Vigilante hadn't killed her the first time. Right, uh, last season I was like, oh shit, that's right. This all makes sense. It's like they did a pretty good job of of, of this, and um, yeah, between this and then Agent Watson putting listen to Black Women because she put everything together. Yo, I feel like what they're doing with Agent Watson what they would have eventually done with Amanda Waller had yes. WB not come down and said, you can't use Amanda yeah. Waller anymore. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she, she knows everything. Like she's yeah. so yeah, come into my office. Let, let's, let's go talk. Let's, so I, I, I'm really interested to see where they go with agent Watson. Like, I hope she's not someone that just sticks around for season six, right? Like I hope whatever the resolution of that storyline is, they find ways to keep bringing her back. So do you remember the police commissioner last season, the black guy? Yes. Who kind of, I think kind of figured out that Oliver was, the green arrow. I mean, it, it, it's all been said in that episode um, where the where the women break out of jail. It's like right. he knows, but he's just like, eh, I'm yeah, not you don't do shit about it. And I'm kind of hoping that's what happens with Agent Watson. I'm hoping that eventually she realizes like, she's going to push it. She's going to figure it out. But it's one of those things where she's like, "You guys are the good guys, though." Like, but I, I want to see that push though. I don't want it to happen like right. soon. Well, that, I think that's going to be the whole her whole story arc. Right. Well, one, it's the obsession of I know it's you for, but I have to prove it exactly. Um, I, so one thing I actually really loved about Static Shock, there's an episode where Ebon figures out that Virgil is static because only one kid in the neighborhood has that haircut. <laughs> like, it's him. But because Ebon's a crazy person, when he captures Virgil, he says, I have to prove that it's him. I have to be right. And that's how he gets fucked up. I think they're going to go that route with Agent Watson, where she's like, I know it's these four, but I have to prove it. Because she's got the whole team. She's like, she, she already knows. It's like, listen, you're always around. The Green Arrow showed up when 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 Oliver shows up, the Vigilante shows up. It's just like she, you're always you're, you're with you're with you're with. She don't talk to Felicity. You're uh, you're always his um his alibi. So you're willing to testify that you're always his alibi on that. I'm just like yeah. And Felicity's not like paying. I'm like yo, Felicity, don't like get no, a lawyer. Felicity, like, what you say is fifth. Right. One, two, three, four, fifth. That's, like, no, I'm like not. you guys are you guys are willingly talking to this woman. You're gonna get her fucked up like. There's no lawyers involved. There's not like you guys aren't realizing that this is gonna get this is a lot harder and she's coming down with a lot. Yeah, it's it's gonna be like when she was she was like she was done. She's like, yeah. So where were you? She's like, I was here. Uh, no, you weren't. The lights were out. Lights were like, out. You were gone. Yeah, you were gone. <laughs> like what? I was gone. What do you mean 
I was gone. I wasn't gone. That's ridiculous. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of things, but right. I'm more focused on what I can prove. That's, right. So mm-hmm. I, I really, I like the actress. I want to see what they do with her. I hope she's just not someone for season six. I hope not either. I hope they stick around for that too. So because well, uh, like what they could easily do is after they resolve for season six arc, whatever that conclusion of that is, just bring on the arc of season seven, because she's clearly someone with. Advanced investigative skills. Someone that would be an analyst at an Argus-like organization. And, and that's the one thing. That's the one thing I haven't figured out yet. I'm like, yo, why didn't somebody call up Argus and tell the FBI to fall back? Like, because it's like, because Ar- Argus knows. Because I'm like, okay, there's Argus, and then there's a fucking FBI. Like to me, Argus tops the FBI. So you need to have Argus come up and be like, hey, listen, fall the fuck back from this. Well, see, that could happen, and that could also push Watson to villainy because it's like, right. I have to prove this thing. Like, exactly. again, there's so many interesting things they could do with this character. And, again, I feel like this is what they would have eventually done with Amanda Waller had WB not gotten involved and so, said you can't use her. I, so I don't want her to go to be a villain, but if they do this, I have this idea of you get her, um, the black woman that from earlier this season. Yes. And then the other – remember the other, the other one, the other uh, black woman they had? That, that was broke part- out from prison uh, the, last she- season. Right, but she was because she was um she was a dirty cop. She was a dirty cop. Get all three of them in a team together <laughs> because <laughs> all three of them are brilliant. All three of them are brilliant. They're badass and they fuck people up. Yeah, I'm all in for that, yo. Let me. I mean, we already have the minority team. Why not uh... minority team versus minor uh, minority team too? Yeah, I'm I'm all down for that, yo. I'm just so um. But yeah, no, I I really enjoyed this episode. I think this episode is great. Like so far, so far, I think um. On the Arrowverse, they've they've really gotten they they bounced back from some of the down uh, again. I don't think Arrow or Legend Tomorrow had to worry about bouncing back. They think they were both really on it last season. But like Flash, and I've heard good things about Supergirl this season too. So it's like I, I'm I'm glad. It looks like, looks like it's really good. I will say, I mean, really interested. I don't know if you heard, Adam uh, uh, Andrew uh, Kressberg. Yeah, I heard got that suspended. News. Got suspended for. Um, uh, alleged sexual harassment. Like everybody in Hollywood right now, if you're a man, uh, and if you've ever sexual harassed somebody or, or or raped somebody or done anything like that, you are going like just go ahead and go ahead and cop to it now because you are going to get but found that's out. All you can do. You're going to get found out, and so uh, he got suspended. Like they didn't. I I don't want to say they didn't wait, but it's like I don't know when the uh, when the allegations first came out. Like I don't know if all of a sudden people felt you know, comfortable now making the allegations now. Or for something like, and if, that, and if that's the case, and and WB TV uh, worked this quickly to suspend him, they should be committed for it. But what I think is probably more likely what happened is these are allegations that have been out there for the longest time, and what you're seeing now is um, damage control, right? And I, I can't commend that. I mean, it's like uh, your boy um, Bergazna. Bergaza at a DC. Oh, that's not my boy, but yes, that that's one of the ones that has driven me crazy. Because for all the talk about, and I'm not saying that there aren't these these men at Marvel or Image, because we know there there are. Uh, but this guy is. It feels like every year it comes up. No, every year, not only does the old stuff come up, new, new things come up. up. Right, and like, and and to my knowledge, DC has never addressed it. And I'll well, be they, interested in they seeing. They might now. That's what I'm looking at now. Like I feel like in the climate now, you're gonna see it. And in that case, you can't. I, I feel like it, we're gonna talk more about this on the insanity check. But I feel like that's that's some bullshit that it takes this now for people to to stand up on this shit. So, um, but uh, yeah, I had to bring that up because it's like you know this is this is a guy uh, you know uh, Kressberg. He, this is showrunner for for almost all the shows like Arrow, Supergirl, yeah, he, Flash. He, he touches like, it, all of them. all of them. Like the entire Arrowverse is with him and Berlanti. So. I'm like, if Chris, and this is my thing, it's like, it's like a cancer. So once it's Cressberg, like, is there going to be something that comes out about Berlanti? Is there going to be something that comes out about, every, like, like who else is going to get caught up in this, you know? Um, so we'll see. Um, I'm, it's, it's not stopping anytime soon. So um, before we get out of here, there were some topics that we were going to, we're having you on the insanity check, but there were some topics we wanted to talk about. Uh, I was going to bring them up on the insanity check, but since we have you here for a Super Tuesday and they are more Super Tuesday related. We'll we'll uh, we'll just deal with them here uh, and, and get in here. Let's see. Um, the first one was dealing with uh, the Disney uh, buying Fox News. Um, I, I know that uh, there was this talk about Disney buying uh, significant portions of 20th Century Fox, and that would include some of the parts of the Marvel characters that they have in their movie, movie universe. Um, 
I, I believe they're not in talks now, but some there was another report saying that there are still talks or maybe some of the Marvel characters and blah, 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 blah. We're not going to get all that. We, we've talked about other places, but I think you, what you want to really focus on is people who don't want to... I think it was... Was it Rob Leefield that came out and said something about don't don't tell him Fox don't sell because, you know, he wants Deadpool to stay at Fox because that's the only place that... You know, we'll let them be R-rated. Like, Disney will never do an R-rated Deadpool and blah, 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 blah. I think. Right. So, like, that's specifically what I wanted to talk about, right? The this, this myth that Deadpool is great because it's R-rated. I would contend that Deadpool is great because they let Ryan Reynolds tell the story he wanted to tell this whole time. They, they Correct. They, they got someone who got the character, and I feel like even if it wasn't rated R, like, if you gave Reynolds the PG-13, he would have found a way to make it work. Because the only thing R-rated about R... Honestly... People think it's the violence and, and Deadpool. You could tamp that down a little bit. No, it's it was, two it was scenes. Sex. No, there's two scenes that made this R-rated. Yes. The pegging, because even yes. the sex scene, it was PG-13 until the pegging happened. Yes. And then um, when, God, I forgot her name, when she's topless. Oh, yeah, I completely forgot about that. Yes. Yeah. Those are the two scenes that got it R-rated. That's yeah. it. Yeah, because like people don't understand that when it comes to violence, you can... Get, Look, we just we just saw Arrow where like uh, Slade was literally sticking people through the chest with his fucking sword. It's like you can get away with a lot in R rating for I mean in PG thirteen on 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 a movie. So, and the other thing that I, I would push back on that. So Disney's Ultimate Spider Man, or the show Ultimate Spider Man, they had an episode where Deadpool shows up, uh, voiced by Will Ferrell, um, the older brother from Boy Meets World, or the voice of Tony McGinnis. That's what mm-hmm. you know him as one of those two things. He shows up as Deadpool, and there's this whole thing where he can't say kill. <laughs> like, he actually, he physically cannot say the word kill. So he says, yes, you know, unalive them, sleep them with the fishes, well, K-word them. <laughs> Wait, you mean, and Spider-Man says, you mean kill? Yeah, I can't say that word. You know, it's a weird thing from upstairs. They won't let me do it. <laughs> and they capture the manic personality of Deadpool, the fourth wall breaking, all of it, and it's done really well. Like, uh, there's a part where Spider-Man and Deadpool are fighting, and where they're fighting is booby-trapped. And, Spider- and Spider-Man's like, oh, crap, booby traps. Deadpool starts cracking up and says, you said trap. <laughs> and Spider-Man just punches him in the face like, you fucking moron. But I, I, don't, I even think that it would be even more funny to do it PG-13 because you make that part of Deadpool's thing. It's like him not being able to do certain things like, oh, I wanted to do this or make the, make the edits part of the fourth wall yeah. and have him actually comment on the, like, oh, come on, guys. There's some, like, there, there's certain things you can well, do to make it really fucking funny, which would work. Like, this idea that somehow you can't make a PG-13 Deadpool work is so unimaginative to me. It's like, you guys are being so fucking lazy. Of course it could work. So, there, there's even a scene in the original Deadpool where, he, like, he moves the camera, like, you're not going to see what I do next. Right. Do you know, you could... That's a gag that that still works in a PG-13 Deadpool. Like, I feel like a lot of the, oh, it has to be R-rated. It's people that think R-rated equals edgy. Yeah, and it doesn't. And and then the other pushback on this is uh, Disney is only Marvel who does all the Netflix TV show. They're doing the fucking Punisher, guys. Yeah. Like, I'm really interested to see how they handle yeah, Punisher I'm- with... The current climate, right? Yeah. Because there, there's no way to get around the fact that Punisher is a crazy person with guns that kills a lot of people. Like we we both saw that we we all saw that that prison scene with Punisher and the fight scene in yes. season two of Deadpool, like where he murders a bunch of people with a fucking shiv. Like that's also Disney. Like when people go, "Oh, Disney's gonna Disneyfy Deadpool," it's like motherfuckers. You do realize how much Disney owns, right? This is the same Disney that literally in Rogue One killed all of the heroes. So all of the heroes died in, in Rogue One. Like they all die. Like that is a, like, <laughs> that is and you story. go into the movie knowing they're all going to die. And then you have the horror movie well, at the end of Rogue well, One. Well, that's the thing too. People were like, well, it's Disney. Maybe they'll find some way of not killing the cast. Like nope. some people actually thought this. Some people were like, yo, because it's like, di- like, cause, cause you're sitting there going, okay, Star Wars is fine. Huh? Rogue One. Well, well, the rebels all die. Many of them, like they, they all die on this one. So, well, maybe Disney will find some way of not, cause they're not going to kill Jones, they're not gonna kill these people. There's no way they're gonna do it. And yes, they will. <laughs> they not only did they did it, we didn't get the horror show at the end with, with Darth Vader literally stabbing somebody through the fucking door with his lightsaber. And I'm like, are you guys still starting to tell me that Disney you can't do Disney doesn't do hard? It's just it's so, so lazy. For, it's, for for all the talk of the fear of that Disney will make things soft, Disney made Vader terrified. <laughs> First one to make him terrifying. 
Rogue One, he's terrifying. Vader Down, which happened in Marvel, which was owned by Disney, he's horrifying. Star Wars Rebels, that's season two with Vader. He is a horror show every time he shows up. I I think me people I think people need to get out of their minds that I mean and, and even and even here I, even, I I don't even understand it because listen when you really go back and think about Disney movies Disney movies themselves are horrifying like fucking Lion King I was being Lion King Lion Mufasa King? gets trampled we see Mufasa get trampled to death Bambi opens with her with his mo- with his mother being shot and killed all right like. The Hunchback of Notre Dame is basically a white man trying to rape a brown woman. Like, that, that's the central plot of Hunchback of Notre Dame. Frollo is just trying to rape um, Esmeralda because he can't get it in his mind that this brown person rejected him. Uh, every, every single fucking Pixar movie is... Like, I just I saw Coco, and I think tomorrow uh, uh, Phenom and I are going to do a review for it. But um, you're going to be struggling some tears, man. You're going to hold back some tears on that one. Because if you think about what the concept of Coco is, it's this kid, you know... Um, who uh, and he's a living kid who gets pulled into uh, the land of the dead right. with, his, with his ancestors and stuff like that, and he's trying to truck his way find him back. And there's also this idea of him trying to find out uh, who his real father, uh, find his real father, because he needs his father's permission to go back. And when you start going through that whole thing, it's a tearjerker. Yo, I saw the first trailer for it, and I was like, I'm not watching this movie. Oh, oh no, dude, you're gonna read because gonna... no, it looks like a great movie. It's going to be. It's the same thing uh, with Fences. Fences came out at Christmas, and I was like. Not gonna watch this movie at yeah. Christmas time. So uh, you're watching Coco, and I'm watching. I'm watching the movie, and towards the end of the movie, all I'm hearing, I come in the critical, all I'm hearing is, <laughs> "Yep, sounds about right." Just, I, I'm just like, I'm like, oh, you guys are gonna make me do this. Like, stop. Like, I can't. Like, it's so. Like, when people tell me this, I'm like, you guys are telling on yourselves. You're telling me that you don't know what you're talking about because Disney actually does go there, and the fact that they can go there without having to go R rated. Yeah, like that. So that's the talent, right? Because you can tell these stories. You can be, you can be edgy. You can still be violent. You can still be, um, you can still tug on those emotional heartstrings. Still tug on those traumatic heartstrings and not be R rated, mm-hmm. right? Like some things have to be R rated just by the nature of the story. Jessica Jones, because of the nature of that story, you cannot get out of telling the Jessica Jones story without it being R rated, without it being mature themed. Because her story, that's just the nature of her stories. Right. That's not true with Deadpool. Right. And know. again, I commend Disney Marvel for this, too. You can tell more mature stories with Deadpool. They created Gwenpool to tell the more manic stories, to mm-hmm. tell the, the, the more hyperactive stories. They created another character who basically has all the traits of a Deadpool, but is decidedly more kid friendly. Right. It's just kind of crazy. So uh, and then the second thing you had on this you want to talk about is uh, Ryan Michael Bendis leaving uh, Marvel for uh, signing an exclusive deal with Dis- uh, with uh, Disney with uh, DC Comics. Yo, DC <laughs> is turning into NWO. Yeah, they're uh, they're 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 pulling in a lot of top talent. Now I talked about this on the nerd off with uh, Rod and them. I was like, DC is doing that, and that's great for them. But I'm going to be interested in seeing when people go at DC the same way they go at Marvel for diversity because like they're bringing a lot of talent in, but it's still a bunch of white guys. It's a, it's a bunch of white guys, and I'm like. Okay, but that leads into our, our big thing. Like, and, and, and this, I, I like Bendis, and I think that like I get the critiques of him, uh, but I also think that Bendis does things like he gave us Miles Morales, he gave us Riri, he gave us like the reason why the Avengers are some of these some of these Avengers are the, the names they are now is because of Brian Michael Bendis, right? You know, um, but I think the the thing now is who does Marvel go with next to carry these characters so, on? That's what scares me. Right, like especially the the rumor is Bendis and Gabriel, David Gabriel, had an argument over what the Spider Man title would be in two thousand eight. Yeah. This is the rumor. We have no idea if this is true. Yeah. The the rumor is in two thousand eighteen, Spider the Spider Man book will be Peter Parker and Miles Morales will be Miles Morales Spider Man. And Bendis's position has always been Miles is Spider Man. Yeah. So I'm worried about what happens next, specifically for Miles, because Miles has a movie coming out next Christmas for Sony. If Bendis isn't around to consult, what happens with Miles next? Like, we are year, what, Miles came out in 2012. Mm. 2011, I thought. All right, 2011, 2012. We are in year six of the Miles Morales experiment. Yeah. What definitive arcs does Miles Morales have? 
what definitive arch enemies does Miles Morales have? Like easy go-to things for someone new to the character, new to that world that they can just go to. What's an easy well for them? Mm -hmm. They don't have that. And so I'm going to bring up Ultimate Spider-Man again. They didn't let Bendis help on Ultimate Spider-Man, except for the first time Miles shows up. The first time Miles shows up, um, they try to do the the Spider-Verse thing where Peter Parker's going through all the different universes, mm -hmm. right? He ends up in the Ultimate Universe, and he talks with Miles. They have um, they basically sort of recreate the first issue of Spider-Man, but then it's Miles and Peter versus Ultimate Goblin. And it's Miles sort of coming to terms with, you know, I don't have to be Peter Parker. I mm -hmm. can be Miles Morales. I, I am Spider-Man, Right. He shows up, they bring him back in season five, and it's the Wally West problem, the Flash had. He's just sort of there. They don't really do anything with him. He's just like a sidekick. And you can tell it's someone that wanted, they wanted to bring in Miles Morales because they know he's popular. But they don't know what to do with him, and they're not going to the creator to find out, like, yo, what can we do to, to get into this character? And, and, and that's my thing, too. It's like, as much as people hate, you know, for some reason they had this hate for Bendis. I'm like, um... He's probably you're gonna. You, it, it, what if you find out that he was the thing that was keeping some of your favorite characters mm -hmm. there? What would you find out that he was the one that was keeping Riri as Iron Man or you know as Iron Heart? What would you find out he was the one that was keeping Miles Morales as the Spider Man in the universe? And because honestly, I, I feel like what Marvel could do is with Miles Morales is do what they did with what 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 um. What DC originally did with Wally West. I'm going to have some Wally West stuff yes. coming out, which is when Barry died originally, Wally West became the Flash. He wasn't Kid Flash. He wasn't, he wasn't Secondary Flash. He was the Flash. And he was the Flash for years. There was no... I mean, Barry would show up every now and then from the, from the past, would show up every now and then. But for the most part, when you talk about the Flash, it was Wally West. And so even when they, when they brought Barry back and then they got rid of uh, uh, Wally and then you know they did the whole New 52 thing, but then when they did Rebirth... When Wally came, when the original Wally comes back, they're going. He's also the Flash, you know. And you have it going. And this is why I'm like, yo, you need to give Wally a book because Wally deserves this just as much. But he still had that. I can't remember how long. It, it was a long time. I want to say it was like at least three years. Oh no, no, it was longer than that. Because well, I because I, I remember reading Flash in high school. Yeah. And Wally was still Flash. Yeah, Wally so like, was Flash. At least, the, at least three years. It was, it was way longer than that. I want to say. It was like at least a decade or longer. But like, like what Marvel was doing is they're doing what DC is doing now with Barry, original Wally, and New 52 Wally. They all exist. And they had, yeah. the, they're using Peter Parker to tell, again, a more matured Spider-Man stories. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the Dead No More, the Clone Conspiracy stuff, stuff that deals with the lore of Spider-Man. With Miles, they're telling a formative Spider-Man story. This is a kid who's learning how to be Spider-Man. Like, mm -hmm. right now, his character arc, and I already know this is going to piss people off when it happens. It's him coming to terms with, because he, he knows Peter Parker. He lives in Peter Parker's universe. And they have all the memories of their previous interactions. I got the blessing of both Peter Parkers. I can be Spider-Man. I've proven I can be Spider-Man. What does that mean? And God tells him, don't be Spider-Man anymore. And he's like, we mean don't be a hero? I said, no, still be a hero. Don't be Spider-Man. I think they're going to change, change his character from being a Spider-Man. Well, they're, they're going to do what, uh, again, standard character trope. He's not going to be Spider-Man. He's going to be a different hero, take on a different name I mean, for a while. Yeah. Uh, they'll probably do that for an arc or two. But then he's going to realize, I am, am Spider-Man. Spider I'm not Spider-Man because Peter gave me his blessing. I'm not Spider-Man because Aunt May gave me her blessing. I'm Spider-Man because I'm Spider-Man. Because uh, that, that yeah. it's a standard superhero story. That's what I think they're going to end up doing, or what they would have done if Bendis was still there. Yeah. I, if he's not there, I am. I'm less worried about Riri because Riri was just created, so you can give her to a new a new writer, and, and they can spin yeah. out her canon. They can well, give her these but, formative. But at this point, Miles has been here for a long. Uh, and just to go back, um, it's been longer than that. Twenty three years. God damn. Because <laughs> because that's what I thought. Because he he takes over for Barry when Barry dies in eighty six. Oh, and so, snap, yeah, and, and it's not until Jeff John brings Barry back in 2009 that he's no longer the Flash. So it's like, I'm like, no, no, no. Wally West was, and this is why the Wally West thing has always pissed me off. Like, I'm wearing my run, Wally, run a hoodie and, as I do the And I'm hating on it. Like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hating on it. Don't worry, they're going to be in the store soon. But, like, this is why I'm such a Wally West, because he was, Wally West was the Flash. It was not so the other, no, no. If you grew up, you know, anytime after 86 reading Flash comics, the Flash was Wally West. There was no Bar oh, oh, Barry Allen used to be the Flash, the old time over there. That's what it was. So, like, I think that's what 
Marvel should have been doing with Miles at this point. And I think it, with Bendis still there, that's what they're leading up to. Like, right. Even, and now that he's gone, it's like... I'm, that worries me. Again, <sighs> Riri, I'm not so much worried for because she's only seven months old. Well, and not only that, but it's like, you're not going to have Riri be Iron Man. It's like, because at some point, you're going to want her to be her... Yeah, that, that just seemed kind of well, weird. You want her to be Iron Man, or I, 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 I think again, I think the story Bendis is telling, it's going to be this is why Tony Stark matters, but this is why Tony Stark can't be Iron Man anymore. Got you. And so that having, well, we know. And here's the thing: we've seen the future. We kind of know he's not. He's going to become a Sorcerer Supreme. Well, know? yeah. And we know I have another thing too about some of this stuff. Like we know the end because we've seen it. Like he's not, and we know that she has a big part to play. And like I said, I'm. So again, like give, letting a new writer spin that out and sort of form Riri, that that will be whoever Marvel gets, and this is sort of the other half of why I want to talk about this. Whoever Marvel gets to take over the Riri book is getting an amazing opportunity. Yeah, because basically you're getting a character. The bare bones are there. Like Riri doesn't even have a supporting cast yet. No. The only people that Riri like interacts with on the regular are the champions mm-hmm. and sometimes Sam Wilson because Sam Wilson has become the elder statesman for black superheroes. Right. <laughs> like, so I, I love that. That's what Sam Wilson's role is. Yeah. Um, but you basically have someone you can, you can create this whole new world for Riri Williams. Like you take over a miles book. You have a lot of stuff in the background hampering you. There's mm-hmm. clearly a vision there. Whoever takes over that book, that worries me yeah. because I want to know what they're going to do with that. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's, I think there will be some bumps in the road and things for Marvel going forward. But I think it's a better long-term strategy to start getting... Because the other thing, too, people sit there and go, oh, well, they're losing this talent. I'm like, yeah, but they're also trying to bring in diverse talent. Yes. Which which is something, I'm sorry, you don't see at DC. And so that that actually kind of scares me. Not the diverse talent, but where they're pulling the talent from. They're pulling your Tanasi Coates. They're pulling your Roxanne Books, Gays. novels. I'm cool with novelists getting these opportunities, but it makes me like my heart goes out to the black women that have been writing comics for decades being overlooked for someone with name recognition. Right. Like when the news broke out, I saw novelists on Twitter, like people that I follow and I enjoy their work, mm-hmm. but they're like making their pitches to be the next head of Riri mm-hmm. or the next head of the Ironheart book. And I'm like, while I respect your work and I respect the hustle game is the game. I know that there's a lot of writers that can't publicly say this is fucked up because of like your status and persona, but they know it's fucked up because they've put in the work and they're not going to get those opportunities. Well, and the other thing too is like, I, I think that, the, the, and I think this is a, one of the problems that Marvel has had, um, is you bring in these people that, that, that write novels and you bring in their fans, people are making books. Right. And comic books are not books. So you get a bunch of people that are just like, oh, well, you know, uh, I read the first issue of, of of Coach's Black Panther run, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm I'm lost. I don't get it. I'm like, because it's not a novel. It's a comic book. You, it's a comic you get book. Bite size. You're getting it bite right. Size. Like, I, and I don't think a lot of these people who come into comic books understand that. And they're like, and and and, I, and, and I'm not gonna lie, I get kind of my eyes start twitching when I see people start saying, oh, you know, the industry needs to change, needs to adapt, and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, cool. It does need to change. Not, not get me wrong for that. One, Marvel's on the front end of that change because they have Marvel Unlimited. They have all these other ways for you to get their books. But with the changes you guys want, you want to change comic books into books that no longer make some comic books. Right. That like makes it a novel, which is not, it's fine, but that's not the same thing. Well, so again, Marvel being on the cutting edge of that. Uh, they contract or they allowed someone to write a young adult novel for Miles Morales. Yeah, I saw and that. it sold really well. Yeah, I think again that I think that was a pilot for them to see. Can we make novels with mm-hmm. these characters? Like I think what Marvel's trying to do now is they realize we have these insanely popular characters that don't necessarily sell books. What can they sell? And I think that's fine, but we still need the comic book. Oh yeah, like, and I think that's what people don't understand. It's like. Okay, you, you don't want a comic book, you want a novel, and that's fine. I'm not saying that Marvel can't go into that place, but we still need to get the comic book aspect of it in here because I think that's part of the media and that's part of the storytelling that we have. It's like, it's like I understand people who like having their shows they can binge. I also like every now and then having a show that I watch week to week. Yeah. It's like I need to have both. I don't want to, I don't want to get to the point where everything we watch is something that gets is given to me all at once and I can binge it. It's just... Because then I get overload. And I, 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 I don't need that. I like having the schedule. So it's like... 
we can have both there and go. So I don't know. Well, th- that that brings me to the third thing that really worries me about this is Marvel letting is Disney letting this talent go because they're making the conscious decision that we don't need the comic books anymore. Mm. Which, from a profit perspective, they don't need the comic no, books anymore. But from a creative perspective, they definitely need the comic yeah. book. And I think the test case for this is going to be how this Miles movie shakes out. Mm-hmm. Like, what stories they decide to tell with it, where they go with it. That's going to be where Marvel decides, like, okay, do we really need the source material? Or can we just start making our own? Yeah. We'll see. Uh, uh, it's it, it's going to be an interesting time, and um, we'll go from there. But anyway, uh, Justin, thank you very much for being on this uh, review of Arrow and some other stuff. Uh, all these, so I brought everybody on. Like I brought, uh, I had uh, Rod on for uh, Legend of Tomorrow and Flash. I had Shannon on for Arrow last week, and then I did um, the Murder on the Orient Express with, with Tim. And every single one of them, we end up talking about these random other things outside of the actually the review. We talked about the review, but we did other things. So yeah. really enjoy that. Maybe we'll start doing that more with Deepon when he comes back. So, um, well, thank you very much um, again. Uh, tell folks where they can find you at. And get your stuff at me. I know you guys are doing a lot of stuff over there at Three Fifths Podcast. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Uh, you can find us at the Three Fifths Podcast. Um, just search for us. Our show will come up on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever else you get your podcasts. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at LJ90. And yeah, that's pretty much it. There you guys have it. Uh, again, subscribe to us on Super Tuesday Recap. Um, next weekend, we'll be recording our uh, next set of uh, reviews for The Gifted. So you want to make sure that's going to be only on Super Tuesday Recap feed. Uh, you can also get us on uh, YouTube. We'll have a lot of stuff coming out this week on YouTube. Um, I know the Justice League. Uh, we'll, we, I see Justice League on Tuesday. I, I think the reviews can go up on Wednesday, and we'll have our quick review. I'll have a quick review up on uh, YouTube uh, by noon on Wednesday. So actually, maybe or the, I think the embargo is about eight o'clock in the morning. So it'll be up then. So um, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, MTR Network on YouTube. Um, again, folks, thank you very much for listening. Until next time, we're right here. Peace. Thank you.